All right, everybody. Hey, it's me, Ethan. And there's Kyle right there. Our faces hurt from laughing for like an hour and a half because we just had Kellen Erskine, the stand-up comic, and he returned. If Second you, time, if you've been yeah. listening mm-hmm. for a while, he is on audio back when we were just an audio show. We got to have him in live. And we forgot to tell him it was a video show or he didn't read the email carefully because yeah. he came in and he's, he's like, Whoa, hey, oh. He didn't you look guys, that bad. You guys are videotaping us? <laughs> <laughs> he looked like Jesse Pinkman, which is what he always looks like. Which is, you know, that was the smart thing about him just shaving his hair off is he yeah. doesn't have to worry about that kind of thing. So, yeah. I'm, well, I don't know if they have like a certain length of, of hair you can have in the Mormon religion. We'll find out. We'll find out. We yeah. ask him a lot of questions about what, <laughs> 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 what it means to be a clean Mormon comic. But yes, I mean, I highly recommend looking uh, Kellen up. Uh, he's Dry Bar Comedy. He has a comedy special on Prime. He has a bunch of it. He has a Comedy Central video. He's a hardworking, hilarious comic, clean comic. Uh, me and Kyle saw him live. It was really funny. And, yeah, it was uh, great. Um, and he's launching a podcast. Launching a brand new podcast. It'll be out as soon as this comes out, right around the time. It's called The Book Pile. And he summarizes nonfiction books. Summarizes with another comedian. In a funny way, I would, right? I would assume so. I wonder. We'll find out. <laughs> It'd be funny if he was just totally like, this book <laughs> is about the fall of the Third Reich and... <laughs> it's just completely dead serious. <laughs> yeah. We'll find out. I don't know. It's going to launch... It'll be launched by the time this comes out, is what it sounds yeah, like? Yeah, that's what he said. So, okay, yeah. So this is definitely one of the most laugh-filled episodes. The most. I would De- say the most. Definitely. I, I couldn't, yeah. At one point, there I were, collapsed under the table. There were t- yeah. There were <laughs> times my ears are hurting. I couldn't hear the talking because everybody's laughing so hard. This is funny. Enjoy it. Enjoy. You've just joined us for this conversation that we've been naturally having for a while here. I'm Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ethan. <laughs> And this is Kellen. Hi, Kellen. Hey, guys. This is are our we quiet... really starting? Yeah, this, yeah this is a real start. <laughs> this is the real start. I like how good we are at interviews that people yeah. go, was that... Are, where, did you just happened? start the interview? <laughs> <laughs> this is our quiet friend that we have to introduce because he didn't want to... Yeah, yeah you have shy to talk friend, quietly. You're like, oh, and this over here is Kellen. I actually, you? I always do have a note for me before podcasts. I set a reminder for myself to talk louder because it's mm. something I've noticed about myself. It's the yeah. same thing before I, I've done any TV. I set a reminder on my phone that says, lift eyebrows. <laughs> because I have naturally very low eyebrows. Like if I lean my head back, yeah, it looks normal because they just sort of creep underneath. I have deep set eyes. But mm-hmm. if I, when I think I'm looking like surprised, I just look normal. Like if yeah. I put them up like that, I look like a regular person. So yeah. I have to do that like during shows and stuff too. I'm going to have so many wrinkles up here yep. on my forehead just because I'm constantly trying to look like a regular person. I realized one time I had been doing tons of comic conventions and, you know, smiling at everybody. And then I got this review one day. This kid said, he's such a D word, blah, blah, blah. He's so mean. Like, I feel like I love everybody. I'm a nice guy. And then I, I looked in the mirror to see what my smile looked like. And I realized it was not, I wasn't smiling at all. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like and I didn't, I, I didn't put my eyes into it at all. I Twitching think, your mouth. I think it's so much worse to say D word because I thought of like seven things. Yeah, there's so many <laughs> options. <laughs> like Dumbledore is that? <laughs> Donkey something. Yeah, we we bleep all cuss words on this podcast, and it makes it so much worse. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> your imagination for sure. just goes yeah. wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, not mine. Someone who has more impure thoughts yeah. than me might call their imagination. Away. Sinful people. <laughs> <Go wild. laughs> Sinful. Sinful. So, can you guys here? hear uh, when you listen to the podcast? Do you hear the laugh? Yeah, it's like a laugh track. It's we, great. I, I said nice. I tweeted <laughs> at one point like the the. The podcast producer laughing unmiked in the background is mm-hmm. the new studio audience. Yeah, yeah. that's all it true. Is. <laughs> and it actually does help. Yeah, yeah. it has a little uh, At some point, I'm going to tell a sad story and just one guy in the corner is going to be like, oh. <laughs> Weeping quietly in the corner. <laughs> we got some interesting emails about our friend Patrick that laughs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people were upset about it. Oh, and really? I could be upset. <laughs> Mostly we get happy, but there's a Mostly few people, people like it. Few so. people are like, what does he think? Everything you say is funny? Literally? <laughs> he does laugh pretty hard. It makes you feel good about <laughs> yourself. you want, yeah. Yeah, it eggs us on. <laughs> <laughs> Usually a podcast is just like two dudes in a garage, so this helps. That's how yeah. we started. That's how we started. Yeah. When That's we good. interviewed you the first time, that we had upgraded to Better Digs. We had a real office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the first time we... we felk felt cool then. Wow. 
we were doing our podcast and it was like 100 degrees in Southern California. And so... And then we had to keep the garage closed. And we, we, like, we closed the garage, started up, and then by the end, we're like melting. Sighing, yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, there's this creepy laugh because the mailman has his ear on the garage panel. <laughs> well, no, there'd be people walking by with leaf blowers and weed eaters right outside. <laughs> Trucks driving by. Yeah. <laughs> so humble beginnings, you know. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever worked as a guy who blows leaves? Uh-uh. <laughs> I, always, I always think about that. Yeah, my was, roommate did. I was walking my kids the other day, and I was like, I've had some bad jobs, but that guy has a gasoline engine. <laughs> He's moving <laughs> On leaves. his shoulder blades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I can't stand the smell of it from 100 seems- feet away. And that guy, he's like wearing a mask like that does anything. <laughs> 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 but I think I, w- I would prefer that. There's, I think it's the mowing and the weed eating that I'd hate more. Oh, I yeah, because when, because when you're a leaf blower, it's just like you have a just ma- magical powers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like a kind of a gun. Like, you know, you can pretend that you're blasting aliens or something. Or, you, know. <laughs> you have to have an imagination. I love how put out they are when they see you and they have to turn it off so you can walk by. I'm like, I'm sorry <laughs> that I'm on a sidewalk. <laughs> they just stand there. I'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just passive aggressively have it idling. Yeah. They're like, it's okay. Gas is cheap. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's all we got. Yeah, that's so, it. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. <laughs> so, speaking of uh, having one guy laughing in the background, <laughs> what, what are, what are, you know, I'm sure you've had shows like that. What are some of your, uh, you know, your stand-up comic? If people don't know that, we've I had you on know. in the past. Mm-hmm. You were uh, one of our favorite guests of all time, um, mostly because you just talk about funny stuff and not politics constantly. And uh, and so, yeah, tell us about that. So, what do you think about Trump? <laughs> Answer those simultaneously. <laughs> Every other word. <laughs> hmm. So which one? <laughs> ignore the Trump one. I, I think both of these are going to lose me followers. Yeah, ignore the Trump. Talk about how unfunny I was once. <laughs> yeah, tell us about your worst. Well, no, you got to convince people. <laughs> bomb. You can be funny, but you got to build. An well, didn't we ask him this last time? Did we I gotta, uh, tell us your worst bomb maybe. story? Yeah, yeah. He told us. A, well, he told us on Kimmel. I think he told us. Yeah, about you went that. out and read your phone yeah. for, and then we went and watched and it, and it wasn't nearly as bad as you made it sound. Okay. Well, I'm uh, I'm hard on myself, which is yeah. why I'm so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did Same. I tell you about how I like, bombed in front of Robin Williams? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, you might have. Blown I guess I've only bombed last time. twice, and, okay. that, and, and I already told talked him. about the two times. I'm not talking yeah. about bombing. I mean, like you get a gig and you're like, oh no, what is this? Oh yeah, one time I did a. I well, one time I didn't know that it was a bad gig. I went in thinking that it was different. I get asked to do corporate stuff. In fact, I've done a few like virtual corporate shows that have been okay. They've been great, actually. Virtual, really? Like yeah, Zoom? for any uh, corporations out there who want me, <laughs> they've been fantastic. <laughs> if Microsoft Killed. is watching, or <laughs> it's, it's even better than live. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> there's a good way to do it. But mm-hmm. I went to this one place, and uh, I had been told that it was for uh, auto mechanics, that I was going to be performing in front of 100 mechanics. And so I was like, I don't know anything about cars, Just but I, waving their I, have wrenches couple, in the air. I have a couple sto- stories about how my car broke down. And uh, <laughs> so I go in there. And uh, I'm 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 telling these stories about how my car is broken down, and uh, I don't know how to work on cars, but you guys do, and you know all this stuff. Like, I'm always the idiot that comes in, and I'm like, could you look at my thing? And it turns out, you know, it's just uh, you know I need to put air in my tire. I'm telling these stories, and nothing is really hitting. <laughs> But also nobody is saying anything to me. Mm. So then afterwards, I walk over, I get the check from the person. And she goes, uh, yeah, we just paint cars. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that helps. Hmm. I had this, I, I think I mentioned this earlier. I, we had a couple dings in our car and a guy showed up in a filthy van with his two kids. And he's like, hey, I got the paint here. I'm a body guy. I can clean, fix your car up. And he like offered this amazing price. So I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll go for it. Why not? And then just wrecked it. Like, there's like paint on our windows. Whoa. Like, 
just like, well, why even do anything? I guess for money, but like, why not just take the money and run or something? It's just, he spent forever to make it look just awful. He seemed legit. I mean, he had a van. He had a dirty van. <laughs> <laughs> he had nice kids. His he had kids a spray funny. Paint. But then I'm like, oh, his kids are in on this con. Like, this is a whole thing they do together. Going house to house. Yeah. Well, it's like when they ask for money, but they've got the kids standing next to them. That's yeah. It makes it seem more. Yeah. And, they, and he made the kids sit around and just the whole time he did it. I locked my keys out of my car uh, one time in front of my house and it was really embarrassing. And I, so I called the guy, just a local guy had come over and he, it was really shady though. I didn't know, this was years ago. Um, I didn't know how much he charged or anything. I just, I really needed this done because I had to go. So he starts putting this stuff in the window, this inflatable thing to sort of ease the window down and he shoves something in it. And I was like, how much is this going to be, by the way? Because uh, it just said like $75 for the initial mm. for him to get there. He goes, well, you know, it's the 75 and then, and then it's another 75 And I was like, I, I, I'm not going to, I can't do that. <laughs> and he goes, okay. And he starts to take his thing out. And I was like, never mind, do it. Like, you, <laughs> you, you know where I live. <laughs> and you've clearly just shown me you have all the tools to break into things. <laughs> so here's my money. And now I have like seven extra car keys. So that never happens again. I locked my keys in my car while it was running in the pouring rain one time. <laughs> Is it still there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I spent, it was a, it was a, a convertible and like a cloth top and the, the window was kind of cracked luckily and the way those windows like I, I basically shoved and shoved and like cranked my elbow through the through the hole it, like the window bends I'm surprised it didn't like snap or something but oh. i did it i <laughs> got was, out i got it that was gonna be such a better story if I the know. top was down the, the whole cop. time <laughs> It yeah. was a convertible. That's <laughs> where I thought that was fun. <laughs> that would be so yeah. great. You lock your but, keys and you, and you like, call the locksmith and you're like, man, do you have something for this? And he's like, like an arm? <laughs> that was in Oregon, the worst car. To, you, you don't want to own one of those in Oregon because it pours rain all the time and it just they just leak. And the water drips in such a fashion that it constantly falls right between your legs the entire time you're driving. So you get out of the car and it looks like you've wet yourself. Oh, man. Yeah. My buddy's dad had a convertible, and I thought it was the coolest thing until, like, you drive in the back, and it's cool for, like, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, oh, man, this is a bad design. It's like being assaulted by a guy like with a leaf blower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the guy who doesn't respect you on the sidewalk. <laughs> right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> so these virtual events that you do, yeah. do you like set up a whole stage in your house and then like there's a camera and oh, you're like, hey, that's so weird you to have me. the mic, <laughs> the <laughs> mic to like cling to? I'm imagining it's tough without like the immediate audience feedback. Can you like hear people laughing? So at the way that Zoom I do or? it now, the, the, the optimum position is to uh, set up is to have, because I did one with like a hundred people, the, the optimum is to have like and six people. Like in little boxes? Just six um What's what's his name? The guy who laughs. Patrick. Patrick. Sick to have like six Patricks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you find the Patricks of the company, they don't know what you're saying. If you say, "Can you find me six Patricks?" Yeah, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> it tends to confuse. <laughs> so you just have them. They're they're unmuted. Are, okay. And it's like. So it's like doing a, a show for the Brady Bunch. You're just like, <laughs> they're all watching and you just do jokes. And they're looking up. <laughs> looking at each other. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one, you. That is the, that is the weird thing about it is that usually when you're doing comedy, like you guys have been to a show, they'll, they'll like dim the lights. So usually if, if the lighting is good enough on the comic, you can really only see the first row of people or so. Mm -hmm. and everyone else is in the black. That's the best yeah, setup yeah. in a comic. But when you're doing a Zoom show, like I said, 100 people so it's like you can see at least 60 of them on one screen. Oh, yeah. And I'm not used to seeing like every single person's reaction like <laughs> yeah. right up close. <laughs> and then my own face. It's really unsettling. Yeah, I think it, so. So I just 
I just sort of sit there because I, I think mm-hmm. it is weird. It takes a little, it's already an unusual situation, but it's also weird to like hold a wooden spoon in front of your mouth and be like, I'm doing comedy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I try and treat them the <laughs> more casual. I'll still like do my, do my bits, but then I'll have a Q and a at the end. So, cause it's, it's more to me like, like a, a funny zoom meeting than it mm. is a stand up comedy show is how I like to treat it. Mm. You ever not get any questions? No, I always get questions. Okay, They're just usually the same questions. I've had that happen. How do you come up with your jokes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do you get all your ideas? <laughs> Have you ever locked your keys in your car? Nobody likes the answer too, because my my answer to like how do you get your ideas is just coming up with a lot of ideas. You guys know that. That's the only yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. The come only up with way to come ones. up with good ideas, yeah, is to come up with even more bad ones. That's it. <laughs> but people want to know. People want to think. What is it? Do you have like a leather bound notebook or do you? Is there a certain T? <laughs> yeah. No. What's your schedule? <laughs> they should make an app where they superimpose, or you know, however that works, like face transplanting online. You know how they do that? They have the apps. Mm. So they just make an audience, and it just puts all the Zoom people's faces right onto the heads, and it just looks like an audience again. Oh, Virtual audience. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's the the one tough thing that the the thing that that you can't recreate is is the timing because there is a oh yeah with the the delay that just comes with mm-hmm. Zoom meetings there there's a, like stand up is already so delicate in that you're you, you come in right at the end of a certain laugh or if nobody laughs there's a way around that like all these things and all of that just goes out the window mm-hmm. like there's a reason why Zoom comedy didn't exist before <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't technological <laughs> yeah. But again, if anyone at Microsoft is watching, yes, oh, yeah, it's still, it still very, is great. It's funny. still the best option in this hellscape that we're in right now. Yeah, so, so what's happening to like comedians, comedy clubs? I mean, have you done any like destroyed fully, or? I mean, unemployment. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> mainly. Yeah. You know, any like masked hazmat shows or anything like that. Or? No, I did one uh, at the Irvine Improv. They've rented out the entire oh, really? like top floor of the parking garage, so the top level, and they have this oh, wow. 50-foot inflatable projector. They can fit like 200 cars in, which is about how many was there when I went. But everyone in front, if you own a truck, you can back it into the front row and you can sit in the back. So that helps so there at least hmm. were some laughs. Um, even though they're li- whatever, you know, and they're spraying feet COVID away. at you. From their- <laughs> <laughs> Is there a rule that you have to laugh quieter than you speak? <laughs> That's one of the guidelines for Thanksgiving. If you sing, you must sing quieter than you speak. <laughs> so it's one of my favorite. Well masked. Well masked. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Are there uh, Thanksgiving that, that songs? Old song. yeah, that's what we were yeah. trying to figure out. Yeah. We, that old ditty. We figured out Jingle Bells is was written as it a Thanksgiving song. It is technically a Thanksgiving song. song, yeah. But nobody sings it on Thanksgiving. So. <laughs> it's probably a song like Turkey, Turkey, Wait, so. Turkey, 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 Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta write some. <laughs> it is funny that, that like Thanksgiving, the, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas technically, like one of them is selfless. Thanksgiving is selfless mm-hmm. and Christmas is selfish. <laughs> like we've written 20,000 songs yeah. <laughs> about the holiday where we get crap. <laughs> but the one where we have to spend 10 seconds thinking about something that we're grateful for, we're like, pass. <laughs> we started playing Christmas carols yeah. two weeks ago. Are you kidding? I'm just ready to eat something. I need some turkey. Yeah, the songwriters are like, gratitude? I can't do anything with that. Yeah, that's well, really a good subject for <laughs> music or art, really. <laughs> so, your COVID is killing you. So, what are you doing with all your spare time? You got no work. So, COVID's bad. You got hobbies? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Not literally. You didn't get it. Did you get it? If we would have done this during like the first four months of COVID, like I would have walked away so depressed because that's exactly what happened. So COVID, what do you do? You just, you just not make money. <laughs> Is there unemployment that for comedians? Like? Yes. Yeah, I don't really know. Now it's uh, I've I've luckily I've been writing I've been writing. Um, on the new Tuttle Twins cartoon that's coming out next year, so that's been uh, that's been a good project to work on. 
Um, yeah. And I have to say, if you have to, so the Tuttle Twins is like a book series for those that don't know. We had them on. Yeah, Connor. We Not the Connor. twins. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's one, one of only two uh, LDS to come on our show, I yeah. think. Right? Yeah. So huh. just, I, I don't know who the that, other one was. That we know of. Yeah. <laughs> that we know They're of. They're very secretive. They are very secretive. <laughs> They're like Masonic Temple or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't know, yeah. Kellen is the clean Mormon comic. Yes. And that's how he builds that's himself. Your, yeah, your I did. <laughs> <laughs> the CMC. <laughs> what the? Donkey. <laughs> is that how you swear? And that's going to get bleeped. That's, that's going to get bleeped. It's going to be even worse. So, like, <laughs> 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 so I'm working on this children's cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Actually, before we get to that, real quick, that you brought up the Masonic Temple. I did a show at a. <laughs> yes. Speaking yes. of, I Masonic did a Temple. show at a Masonic Temple. Really? Uh, last year, yeah, in Santa Fe, and uh, the green room was like this room where they just had, they just had uh, like their their costumes and stuff. It was probably a blasphemous costumes. Them for me to say that. Yeah, there's certain like their robes, certain and things stuff? that they robes like that a, they wear like for a their head. rituals and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a lot. Of- <laughs> yeah, there's there is the this guy and I'm like a good listener. I I, I, I ask questions. I'm very, you know, introverted, so I, I meet someone for the first time. I'm mm. scared. So <laughs> <laughs> So I was just I was talking to this guy and he got the who was uh he was looking over the temple that day while we were mm-hmm. having this this comedy show in there. He's like the temple guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably yeah. He had like a sword or something. And <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just asking because I'm curious about about these things. You know, I've mm-hmm. read uh, the Da Vinci Code. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, I wonder. I wonder what Michelangelo hid in this place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm asking him about it, and he's like telling me more and more, and he like thinks that I'm like interested to become one of them, mm-hmm. and he's like starting to like silently. Like his voice, he started talking quieter with me because there were other people in the room, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is making me uneasy and excited at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> What was the, uh, what, did he start giving you the steps to I can't get in? tell you. <laughs> I used to have breakfast with an, an old man, and he would always tell me, you know, the Masonic Temple, at the highest levels, you must deny Christ and drink blood. <laughs> what? <laughs> he swears, he swears. He swears at the highest like... levels of the Masonic Temple. No, nope, I deny Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> now that you've did made he, it all I the did, way. Yeah. Did That's he mention to take that? like did 20 you see years. Any, do you see any blood yeah, goblets? Yeah, confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> so the Tuttle Twins. <laughs> Speaking of drinking blood. <laughs> goblets of blood in the dirty Masonic temple. I will say Connor Boyack, he's the, the author of the the, Tuttle, the guy that you guys had on. He's one of the smartest mm-hmm. people I've ever met, like the, the way you eat. Um, and the books, the books are so great for teaching those principles. Um, but it's also been fun because he's come in on some of the writing sessions to just sort of uh, consult, and uh, it's it's been we're making them funny. I guess that's mm. just the blunt way to say it. <laughs> 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 so his books are I am so funny. good, and I will <laughs> say I will say that if you like the books, if you like the books now, like you're gonna love the cartoon even more because mm. we're we're injecting like humor and uh, personality. And like lots of fart jokes. Other things. <laughs> 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 Sorry. You know what's missing from these books? <laughs> you got it up on the whiteboard. I keep coming back to <laughs> fart jokes. I, I had a script I, that they like, I found out later they had it punched up by professional comedy writers, not me. And uh, they just added a bunch of fart jokes. <laughs> and it wasn't even That's that kind of show. It was, yeah, I was like, what was it? Was it they veggie get for this? And you bring it up? Is it? No, it was a uh, it was a pilot that I made with uh, some people. It was, like, it was like an action space animals thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Something I, I I don't appreciate is when when I see a joke in a movie that is like I can tell that it's been written to make a child laugh. Right. Yeah. Like I love most Pixar stuff. 
is just written. It's just funny. You know, like and it's children, like children laugh. If the kids laugh, <laughs> uh, that's like it's great. But you can tell that the writers are just trying to. It's just good writing, mm. and that's what we're striving for in this Tuttle Twins thing. Uh, is that we're it is a kid show but there's also going to be a lot of stuff that's like that's going to be over their heads but there's still mm-hmm. going to be I want it to be fun for absolutely everyone the same way that it's like it's fun to read Harry Potter to your kids it's excruciating to read the Berenstain Bears you know what I mean like they're <laughs> terrible oh kill me yeah and I'm sorry I know that you also write books about bears but the Berenstain Bear books <laughs> Are like, they, are they the were worst. fun as a, as a kid, but like even like I'm over even the nostalgia because I'm like I don't even think some of these lessons I are good. I liked them as a kid. Just, <laughs> that was the option. And when when your kid wants you to keep reading you a Berenstain Bears book, it is like it's a circle of hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the worst. <laughs> Which I learned about labor. at that Mason Temple. Did you? <laughs> Which level are you talking? Yeah, the, it's... What are all the rooms in there? I want to go back to this <laughs> temple. One of the details. I want to think more about the costumes. The Berenstain Bears, it's like... No? <laughs> <laughs> the dad is such an idiot. Yeah. The, the moment you get that pointed mom. out to you guys, the dad's always a complete idiot. Always. Yeah. <laughs> I was like these, like, these parents need to read... Like, they need to go to... There needs to be a Berenstein Bear book where Mama and Papa go to couples therapy. <laughs> <laughs> because well, they seem fine. They're always happy. They never fight. Yeah, but it's because the dad he's, is he's so, just dominated. Yeah, because the mom will be like, "We're not watching TV for a week," and the dad's like, "That's right. Where's the remote control?" <laughs> <laughs> and Mama's like, "That means you too, you stupid idiot." <laughs> <laughs> he like learns the lesson yeah, with the he kids. Learns with the kids I'm like, exactly. Do they not know that dads are reading these? Like, <laughs> who is this for? <laughs> so my sonic temple. <laughs> He's going to get back on the phone with the Tuttle Twins guys. And like, He's did like, you, I, I want another gig there, man. Really, Come on. Did, they promote, did you promote the show? Uh, <laughs> actually, we mostly talked about the Masonic Temple. Hey, Speaking kept, of it, which, it we should have it, an episode. It kept us off Mormonism. So. <laughs> <laughs> My whole mission. <laughs> No, the, the yeah. Tuttle Twins, it is going to be fun. I know that there are going to be like 1% of the Tuttle Twins fan base is going to be like, this isn't canon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, you're into some boring yeah. canon because the <laughs> oh, man. no, the books are fantastic. I get Connor's great. He knows that. <laughs> he does that. Uh, I tell the truth. Mm-hmm. No, he knows. <laughs> 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 A good relationship, and he, he appreciates like what's happening to it, and I'm excited for it too. And the fact that it's like it's a children's show that's teaching principles, but it's also supposed to feel like it's not really teaching. Like it's like it's like joke, joke, teaching thing. Ten more jokes, teach. You know, it's very and then like subtle Mormon <laughs> message. We did find one in the book that they have yeah. the Book of Mormon on the We're, shelf behind it, like hiding in there. The Easter <laughs> egg. grilling Connor on it. Mormon Easter eggs. <laughs> So they're telling jokes. The evils of, ca- of caffeine. <laughs> it's like in the it's like in the Veggie Tales. This guy writes. They're telling jokes, and they're like, "That reminds me of something in Proverbs." So you yeah. do that, but it's like, "Oh yeah, that I'm reminds like, me of something Ron Paul mute. said." Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more subtle. Yeah, there is that the Ron Paul thing. You're joking, but like at the end of the 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 Tuttle Twins book, the Golden Rule. You flip the page and it's this giant just picture and it's and it's literally Ron Paul and he says, Hi kids, I'm Ron Paul. <laughs> that needs to is be it, a running gag in the show that he keeps popping up at a window. Is it an app- <laughs> like an apparition or is it really him? Like like they painted him or no, it's, it's like a drawing they, of him. Yeah, and drawing, like but in the story, is he, he appearing said. like as an apparition or is it like the physical in the, show in the story, up? In the story, there's he a, just talks like, to the reader. There's a camp counselor whose oh. name is Ron. And then oh. I guess that's the big M. Night Shyamalan twist at the end is that it was Ron Paul the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the mustache and the glasses. Wow. <laughs> I was Ron Paul the whole time. Hmm. Which I think is the end of one of them. 
Okay. I think it was the happening. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you could do some funny, like, creepy stuff with it, because in the books, they go to their neighbor's house, like the old man neighbor or whatever, who's like the li- crazy libertarian neighbor. Mm-hmm. And they go there, and he's like, hey, kids, I want to tell you about the free market. It's pretty, that's inherently funny. Wait, you want some of my homemade apple cider? Can <laughs> <laughs> talk about it? <laughs> it's a, it's a, we brought that up. It's Never moon, mind the hair in it. Moonshine <laughs> in, the, in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> so <there's, laughs> Want some edibles, kids? <laughs> <laughs> they should be legal all over the country. Not just in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> so that that book, that's the example. The law that the pilot episode is technically that book, but it's so different because we have the. The kids go with their grandma. She has like this time machine wheelchair that can go through other dimensions and stuff. So we can go to places. And one of the reasons why we were brainstorming <coughs> ideas to have some sort of a, a vehicle that would make it exciting and fun is also so we could skip the part when their old neighbor invites them into his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the idea of taking your wheelchair time machine and ending up back before handicap stuff was invented so she can't get anywhere <laughs> and get stuff. she just stuck well, that's a really funny I idea actually she has rocket boosters but yeah she <laughs> it's in the old west she's like i can't get up these stairs now where's the ramp <laughs> it's not ada compliant yeah and that could be a, a villain who's like the the government guy who's like the government installs those ramps by our laws. Ha, 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 you're screwed. <laughs> That's the villain, <laughs> the evil government guy. And then public she, services. Then she calls him one of those D words you were talking about earlier. <laughs> She's like, "Will you push my wheelchair for me?" And then she turns on the rockets and <laughs> turns into a disintegrated skeleton. Do you got any rider Just positions available? Ideas for you. <laughs> We brought you here for this. Hey, <laughs> he's a fan of my work. Uh, no. Kellen bought my book. I am, yeah. Brave Holly Possum. Possum. It was great. Read it with my kid. Yeah. Continue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas time. I need people to buy it. I need, I need money. It helps kids be more brave. Yeah. yeah. So now that's what I do. At midnight, I just take him outside. I drive him like five miles away. <laughs> In the middle of And I'm like, you find your way back. And I drive home. <laughs> it's that book. It works. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened in the book. It's true. <laughs> Huh. No, it is. <laughs> it really, it really is. It's a good book. Thank you. So, you got any cool stories about gambling? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like doing morning radio. <laughs> That's the only thing that I don't miss <laughs> because of COVID. Was like every other town that I go to, they have you do radio. Like they want you to be funny at five mm-hmm. in the morning. And so they'll ask you for a list of like jokes beforehand. Some of them don't, <laughs> but then some of them do, but none of them have good segues. Yeah, it's all like that. Like, thanks. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you just flew in from LA? Yeah. So man, why do you hate bacon? <laughs> it's funny you say that. I have five wait, minutes wait. on how bacon sucks. Do you hate bacon? No, I'm just, oh, okay. it's a just joke. improvising. He's a comedian. Okay. <laughs> he does this for a living. <laughs> Me and Kyle went to a show. We did. You, you may, you may did. have seen us there. It was awesome. Yeah, could you see us past the lights? Because yeah. we were like in the second... Second or third row, Ish row. Ish. He doesn't even remember. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that? <laughs> no, I do. I remember there weren't it's a, a lot of people at that show, so I probably said something to you guys afterward about, usually it sounds yeah. oh, you know, it's it's a lot bigger. louder, and <laughs> <laughs> you guys just came on a bad night. But I mean, the, the, there's definitely a distinct difference between you and the other comics. Like, you just had this, you're like, oh, okay, this guy's a pro. He knows what he's doing. So do you guys. want to talk about how bad the other comics were? Yeah, oh, you man, want that one. <laughs> Who's the worst comedian? <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, all those other non-Mason comics, they yeah. suck. <laughs> I feel like we were talking about something else. Oh, yeah, gambling. I asked him about gambling. And <laughs> we weren't talking about me. gambling. We were talking about the Berenstein Bears for 40 minutes. <laughs> and then the Masonic Temple. Me. And drinking blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, gambling. So I went... <laughs> I went to uh, Atlantic City last year. 
I did uh, all of my stories were last year or any time before that. <laughs> all of your stories? Okay, they're old. <laughs> because because, you, because, because I haven't dropped. worked yeah. since March. Uh, but yeah, I went to Atlant- Atlantic City for the first time. And uh, as you guys well know, it's full of casinos. Um, yeah, obviously. Sure. I've never... <laughs> I, don't know. I don't even know where that is. Where is it? It's on the... East Coast? Okay. Then New Jersey. New Jersey. I, like oh, okay. <laughs> I like that you're trying to sound smart, but added like half a question mark. <laughs> and it was yeah. a very broad answer anyway. I'm guessing it's near the Atlantic Ocean. Come on, man. You know, it's, it's on the East Coast? It's somewhere in this 3,000 mile <laughs> I'm, stretch. It's on Earth somewhere on land. <laughs> I always hear them talk about it in TV shows that are set in New York. Like, hey, we're going to Atlantic City. And I, don't, I just assume it was a real place. But, That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a city. It's a gambling town. There's like like a two mile strip of casinos and uh, mm. most of them are shut down at this point but I went to the the Hard Rock one Hard Rock Casino and uh, the other comic was a guy who gambled uh, and I've, I've never gambled in my life and I, I even make fun of it like I have a joke about the the Powerball and how the odds are literally one in 300 million and that's like the same as if if they're like hey you want to win a billion dollars uh We've hidden it in a random house in the United States. You just guess the address. That's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the whole joke. I haven't told it for nine months. I remember you telling it. It was so better. A little rusty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just imagine our audience imagine laughing. It's yeah. a virtual audience. <laughs> thing. So never got. It always seems silly to me. Obviously, it's everything stacked against you because they. Mm. You know, it's just funny they built this like. A 60 story casino and they're like oh no sometimes we lose no <laughs> <laughs> like have you seen my house it's smaller than this place <laughs> so but this guy he went he's like yeah but if you go to like if if you've never gone to a casino or any casino in that chain they'll usually give you something uh uh, a voucher or something if you've never been as you know to get you to like as free money incentive like free money yeah so um so he went down and sure enough I got like ten dollars to to use at any of the slot machines, so I was like, sure. Like, I don't know. I've always wanted to use. Like, since I was a kid, I always thought that they were like games, you know. And disappointed that my parents told me like these are adult games. And I was like, wow. Is it legal? Really is complicated. It, is it legal for Mormons to? Is it, is it legal? legal? Is that more? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the I don't rules. Think a log. I don't know the yeah. rules. It's frowned upon. Okay. Yeah, for okay. sure. <laughs> um, but if, if I, I think it's, it's frowned upon unless you get free money. Okay. And they're like, okay. That would yeah. Be. So that's, God, that's that was a God, that was a God thing. I may, I may walk out of here and get excommunicated. Do Mormons say no a God thing? Do they ever say that? Oh, that was a God thing. It was a real God thing. It's something that. What? Christians no. say that. Yeah. Oh, no. we'll say I mean, no, we're all Christians, right? You say, that's what you guys say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to offend you. <laughs> so real Christians say that, but we don't, we don't know if Mormons say it or not. You don't know. So. You have no idea how many of your listeners right now are giving you a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't read comments anymore, but several months ago, I was going over some tweets. Somebody mentioned me, and they're like, hey, this guy's great. Listen, I heard him on the Babylon Bee. Uh, hey, hey. Here's his dry bar. Yeah. And then he and this other guy start talking, and the other guy's like, uh, "Yeah, I mean, but he's uh, he's a Mormon, so he's he doesn't have everything right." And the other guy was like, "Yeah, I know what you mean." And they just got in this conversation. I was like, "I'm you mentioned me? <laughs> oh, you tagged? <laughs> I'm seeing all of this." <laughs> 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 we all believe in Christ. Let's just leave it at it's that. It's like uh, they summon you into the room and say, we're going to talk about you. Yeah, now. that's exactly what Twitter is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's every scene in Arrested Development, like, invented the scene where two people are talking about someone, like, ostensibly behind their back, and then the camera backs out, and they're right there on the couch. <laughs> that's what Twitter is. <laughs> So I get my ten free dollars and I go to my first slot machine. Like this is like whatever. Uh, I throw it in, and I made seventy dollars. Wow! And like the first, the first time I made, I made the money back essentially. And I was like, ah, whatever. It's luck. I'm sure they set it up. And then I did it again. And I was like, why does anyone work? 
Like, why do people have jobs if this is available? Like, it was that it was that quick (laughs) that I was like, oh, I get it. I get the gambling thing. (laughs) I'm on board. Yeah, and now, uh, yeah, I lost my house. (laughs) Your family. (laughs) But it it was interesting. And then I went to like two other casinos and got free money, and then I, I I lost that. But it was it was interesting to see like how quickly. That that like that addiction can set in like the endorphins. So you didn't take you know? home the seventy dollars. You didn't come back, Richard. Did you gamble the seventy <laughs> and lose it, or did you keep the? 70? Oh no, I still have it. Yeah, so that's <laughs> it's in my pocket right now <laughs> to this day. <laughs> right here, you see my. But I'm gonna stop. Like I'm never gonna do it again because now I can say that I like I ended on top. And like for mm. people who have like gambled their whole lives, they're like, I don't know. I'm probably somewhere. In, you know, they feel good if they're only five thousand under. You know, over the <laughs> average of their entire life. Yeah. <laughs> and now no one is clapping. Appendicitis. <laughs> what do you think about? That? <laughs> <laughs> for the confused listeners, we asked Kellen ahead of time if he had anything he wanted to yeah. talk about in the show, and he. Very specifically said, well, if we need to, I got TikTok gambling and appendicitis. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's only if we need to. I'm like, we are absolutely speaking about all three of those. You can't so, just say that. Yeah, out of everyone it. in this room, there are five other people. How many of you guys have had your appendix out? Anyone else? No. You're the only so it's, only a, it's it is a, a fairly common thing, but I, I didn't know that it was because mm. you kind of feel special when you go to the hospital. Because, you know, you get attention or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, Kellen's going to have surgery. Hmm. And then I come out of it, and every other person I talk to is like, oh, yeah, I had that when I was like eight. <laughs> 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 it, felt, it felt serious. But in like in the, the couple of days leading up to it, I had that pain in, the, in my side. I don't know about you, but like my whole life, at least four times a year, I'll have like a stomach ache and think, wait, which side is my appendix on? You yeah. know, it's <laughs> always like something you hear about. And I think it's because of that really concrete image of, uh, your appendix bursting, like they say that, but as if it's like a water balloon inside your body. It's nothing like that, but just hmm. that that phrase is so visceral that like people yeah. are, are afraid of it. Like even though they they just had a chalupa, <laughs> you're like, yeah. <laughs> I think Taco Bell set off your appendix, <laughs> and so I thought it was that. But then I was pretty sure. Uh, like the second day in, uh, I still didn't say anything because I wanted to be absolutely sure. But like, my wife knew that my stomach was hurting, and uh, we were driving through a Target parking lot. She was driving, which we let them do that in our religion. Oh, that, oh really? Yeah. I was gonna ask. <laughs> Are they like a driver, or is it like? <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, I was in the back. Seat. Another thing that distinguishes chauffeur. Mormons from real Christians. Yeah. <laughs> when they let their wives <laughs> drive. <laughs> so she's, we go through the parking lot and uh, we go over a speed bump. She goes over a speed bump pretty hard, but pretty fast, and it hurt. It hurt. And uh, she's That's still why you don't know, let she, him drive. She, she just. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I thought it was the brakes. <laughs> you know how women drive. I go straight to the front gas station walls. I've seen those videos? You should tell some jokes about women oh, driving. Man. I'm just trying to help you help you set out. I already barely have a career this year. <laughs> I thought you canceled the two shows you have on the books. So she knew that I'd have been having this pain in my side. Neither, neither of us knew what it was yet, but I was like, oh. So I said something sarcastic to her, like, hey, could you go over the next bump? Uh, could you drive even bumpier? That's what I said. <laughs> could you drive even bumpier? Because <laughs> we joke around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so she takes the next one, like, at an angle, you mm-hmm. know, so that it'll hit four times. Yeah, which is pretty smart, hmm. especially for a woman. Could you <laughs> could you bleep that out for all of your listeners who who don't get irony? So, <laughs> but only them. So, so she hits it. It was actually like a genius move because it was like bu, 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 you know after what I just said, and I was like, Gah. so then I bring that up about every other day since then mm-hmm. that she did that while I actually had appendicitis. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you okay, almost killed me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, TikTok. I mean, how much? More? 
<laughs> we're just blowing through. I these. love the double whammy of that. Of that, that's also something you say like during a, someone's boring story. <laughs> Tick tock. Tick tock. <laughs> <laughs> No, the whole TikTok thing is just that I, I joined TikTok this year and then I stopped. Like, all of it happened during mm. COVID. Somebody told me, yeah, you can get a bunch of followers on there. And so I joined it. I started doing, like, a video every day just to, like, keep myself from going uh, crazy. And uh, I ended up getting, like, 50,000 followers in a very wow. short amount of time, which is so much bigger than any other platform that I'm on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I you don't have, like, any followers on Twitter. <sighs> <laughs> Kyle, yeah, we talked about our Twitter followings last time. And Kyle has since surpassed us both <laughs> by far because he, but he has the Twitter voice because he just doesn't care. If, you know, he can't get canceled. So he, it's true. I can't get canceled. He just goes hard. Yeah. I'm, how many, I'm not like, what's your uh, QAnon or anything? <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear. I like that you have a, a, a goal. <laughs> yet. Yet. How many do you have? Uh, 29,000. That's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I love this new social score. It is funny, well, though, in Twitter land, how it's still such a small number. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can have like 100,000 followers on Twitter and be absolutely nobody yeah. in real life. Yeah. It, it's an interesting, it's that, it's that principle, too. Of like, you're never happy because, like, you're, you're constantly, once you reach a goal, all you do then is compare yourself to everyone who has even more than you. Right. You know, <laughs> well, you find these weird guys, they're like marketing guys, or like lawyers, or people. And I, I'm assuming maybe they're paying these like follower farms or something. Yeah. Like, they must be buying follows because nobody knows who this guy is. It's bizarre. Well, every once in a while, you'll see that guy in like a blue suit. His profile picture is a blue suit, and he's mm -hmm. like, he has his hand on a, a jet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll, he'll be like, I'm going to give a thousand bucks to the next three people that, and boom, he gets like 90,000 more followers. <laughs> like, I think anyone could just say that. I would love to do that. Like, Let's I'm try just going to, yeah, yeah try just that. dress in like overalls and no shirt. <laughs> But still be like, I'm going to give a cruise ship to the next seven people. I've got $70 in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Hand this to the next. Fresh from <laughs> Atlantic City. City. I, I was curious. I tried it one time. So for my Bearmageddon page on Facebook, I just wanted to try it. On, on Fiverr, there's a thing that says, get a thousand followers, $5. So I tried it. And sure enough, and they were all like, you know, from like a, Philippines or something. Yeah, they're all. Yeah, I didn't do it after that. It's like I just wanted to see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like scamming Ky us this whole time. Sounds like Kyle's done that twenty nine <laughs> times. Yeah, Kyle's <laughs> very familiar. That's the with only this explanation. Process. So, did you dance on TikTok or what? Yeah, how did you get these? <laughs> I mean, how'd the, that go? <laughs> and why did you get off it so fast? Because of the Chinese? Because. Because <laughs> of the Chinese. <laughs> Is it the chai comes? <laughs> well, that's what I I do love about <laughs> certain that I was loving about TikTok is like I don't I don't know what the algorithm is, but I would see a, a one video of a guy dumping ketchup on his friend, and then the next video would be a guy with you know three American flags on the back of his truck, like MAGA and all that. And I mm -hmm. want to those guys. I wanted to be like you know that this is owned by the Chinese. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you want to try uh, I don't know Facebook, <laughs> but this. What happened was I was I was uploading a video every day and I put it in the, in my bio every day a new new clip until I ran out of stuff which is which is pretty quick. So a week later, <laughs> <laughs> fast forward to the next day. So this. <laughs> so but on one of the days, on one of the days I'm I'm going through the comments. This is one of the reasons why I don't read comments anymore. Um, all of them had been pretty positive, but on one of the days I, I uploaded a clip and. This kid comments, this is what I get for waiting 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> He's been sitting there refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for you. Wow. <laughs> And that was the last one that I did. I just, so I hate entitled. that. Yeah, I hate that, that mentality, especially with entertainment nowadays, that it's like, no, you give me stuff. Yeah. And I do nothing for you. That's, that's really, yeah. um, this podcast isn't free, is it? 
Uh, this part is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that no, but I joke. know that at least there's like, you can monetize it with advertising and everything else just right, like you can right. like a YouTube video. But with TikTok, there's no way to monetize it. So like right. I'm literally getting, even on, like I, I'm making money off of my videos. They're essentially free for anyone watching, but I'm still getting something from it. But TikTok is nothing at all. So I thought at least if I have 50,000 followers, maybe... You know, I could put an announcement, people to come to shows, but it's been like so, it's like there's zero impact with those. I think it's part of the algorithm. If you see how many people have so many followers, mm. it's, 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 a, it's a smart move on their part because, yeah, you have all these followers, but they're doing nothing for you. And and there's nothing that you can capitalize on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if everyone, the, I think the goal for TikTok is to make everyone feel famous. Mm. Everyone, everyone's mm. a blue check. Yeah, and that's why everyone's on it. So hand them out. It was that, and it was it was it was also finding out really about comment culture, which you guys don't mm. know anything about. No, nothing. but <laughs> <laughs> but you so I'm sure you guys have seen this. This is new for me. Seeing that, like, I had a video that had uh, had close to a million views, and I was I was just going through the comments every day because I had nothing else to do. I go <laughs> just scrolling through comments, <laughs> scrolling through them. Nobody had said anything up until about I had about nine hundred thousand views, and then all of a sudden, one guy. One guy says, this reminds me of a John Mulaney bit. Mm. And it was nothing like it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, every five comments was like, ah, this has Mulaney vibes. So mm. it's just like, it's this whole culture of people watch a video, scroll through the comments, find one that maybe they didn't even have that opinion, mm -hmm. but this person does, so it validates me if I also put it down. It's such like a, a cowardly, like safe way of criticizing someone else. Yeah. Is by seeing that there's a bandwagon and trying to create your own because that guy got likes with his comment. It's just, it's so toxic too that now there are all these people that maybe didn't feel that. Mm. I'm sure that you guys have I seen the like same sleuth. thing. I feel like we see it. Yeah. What we'll see is that, you know, most of our followers are, you know, they lean right or Christian or whatever. And uh, Christian or whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I thought I was waiting for I didn't right mean to point this or one. Christian <laughs> or Mormon. We do have a good amount of Mormon. We do have a good LDS follower. Who they send us the nicest hate mail, by the way. Yeah, the nicest Very hate kind of. Oh, <laughs> very most it. polite hate mail you'll ever see. And we have a little LDS joke. To whom it may concern. They, yeah, very politely ask us to take it down. <laughs> the underwear they don't I didn't, I was amazed like they do not like you joking about that underwear oh the the it's temple sensitive. garments yeah the temple garments I'm right here guys <laughs> <laughs> at Kellen Erskine <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying. I oh, know. yeah, yeah. What, what, the so someone will, we have, yeah. Yeah, someone will quote, like a progressive Twitter account with 50,000 followers or something will quote tweet it and go, this is a dumb joke. And then all of a sudden, all of progressive Twitter is sure. like, this is oh, a yeah, terrible yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. That's how cancel culture works. That was the thing that happened to us with our other podcasts. Like, one guy said something and then just people that had never heard, that would never care to comment on or say anything, they latch onto that. Yeah, a lot of it is people that aren't part of your audience, really. That are yeah, just like they like to finding feel it and like there's they have found something to point and laugh at. Justice so. warriors of some kind. Yeah, <laughs> this is really pitiful. We're sitting, <laughs> <laughs> sitting oh man, these people were mean to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just three guys crying on each other's shoulders. <laughs> Lost followers. <laughs> now is the time for the guy in the corner to go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <Thanks, guys. laughs> My wife is constantly telling me to look at TikTok videos. She's just sitting there like in bed and she'll just heal. for hours like, this is hilarious. All I see is people And every dancing. single one she sh shows me, I'm like, was that, that was the punchline at the yeah. end there? Like, I didn't, yeah. I don't get it. It's a whole culture of like it's meme like sharing. Yeah. So, so one of the, it. another thing that drove me away from it is that how many people, there were all these people who would start lip syncing my comedy videos, which is such what? a bizarre thing. Bizarre. And sometimes getting more views than I did. <laughs> 
and it's like no exaggeration. Your voice coming out of their mouth. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like a girl with with uh, like glam makeup on. Oh, She's yeah. eating Chinese food and then saying, doing my grocery cart bit. Yeah. What? And boom. Yeah. I think it's part of TikTok views. is you share someone and you can take the audio and then you do oh, it. Oh, really? It's like part of like yeah, resharing it. Weird. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't work. Uh, but then I would never see the results. Like yeah. I wouldn't get new followers. <laughs> she just would. And, yeah. and then all these people in her comments would be like, you're hilarious. <laughs> like, you know, this is a man's voice. Like, <laughs> they can go to and, you and say, you're really hey, ripping off that noodle she, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you think there are 300 people laughing at her eating Chinese food in her living room? Like, that's that's me. That's my audio. It's such a bizarre thing that never happened before. You never saw it on yeah. Facebook or YouTube that people would spend <laughs> the time to make a video of themselves lip syncing you know, uh, it was a Brian Rinkin. Like it was a lip sync. Did like yeah. she nail it though? Like the lip sync, or did you tell she was like catching the words? Like, you know, like. She, well, she probably recorded a bunch of times. No yeah, did she practice it? Like, get it really yeah. locked. It locked seems in, like or? they do. Yeah, yeah. It hmm. was well edited. Yeah. I, I mean, saw that one girl got her like. Didn't she get like a Netflix special or something? That girl that does yeah. the uh, Trump. Sarah something. Sarah something that she she like just lip syncs to Trump speeches on TikTok. Really? Wow. <laughs> it's like that's her whole bit. It's like not an impression. It's just like lip syncing. I'm just lip syncing the Trump huh. speech. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of Trump? <laughs> <laughs> we will find out in the subscriber portion. Uh, <laughs> which is beginning right about <laughs> now. What do you, did he want to promote anything? Yeah, you want to promote anything? Beyond the Masonic Temple and um <laughs> 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 Yeah, he'll do Zoom events for the Masonic Temple. I guess uh, Tuttle Twins, I think they have a... Um, What's that going to be on the show? It's like, on VidAngel, right? It's going to be on VidAngel, okay. but it's also just going to be its own app. So you'll just upload mm. the app, probably for free, if you're wondering. Mm. I won't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's it's built on the same... Uh, it's, just, it's, it's the same idea as The Chosen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. where they they sort of crowdfunded and then now it has its own app and it's available on VidAngel. It's the same thing. It's the same studio. Hmm. Awesome. That and uh, my Twitter, which because you need more followers. <laughs> yeah, <get it. laughs> go follow at Kellen Erskine. Follow that man on Twitter. <laughs> if anything, I'm giving it out so I can lose followers <laughs> today. <laughs> and then Instagram. That's it. So. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's do this. Let's get into the subscriber portion. We right. can really talk crazy. Stuff nobody ever hears. Secrets. Oh, man. It's going to be crazy. Coming up next for Babylon B subscribers. I have a good Howie Mandel story for your paid section. Calvinist or Arminian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but three nights in, um, this, this woman raises her hand. Wow. Like it's a class. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, Did you call yes. us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never just like like had a question <laughs> during my jokes. Enjoying this hard hitting interview? Become a Babylon B subscriber to hear the rest of this conversation. Go to babylonb.com slash plans for full length ad free podcasts. Kyle and Ethan would like to thank Seth Dillon for paying the bills, Adam Ford for creating their job, the other writers for tirelessly pitching headlines, the subscribers, and you, the listener. Until next time, this is Dave D'Andrea, the voice of the Babylon Bee. 